The Muslim Brotherhood's unholy alliance with communism stretches as far back as the 1940s and 50s, at the same time that Stalin was in charge of the Soviet Union. And at that same time period, Stalin also said, in such countries as Egypt or China, the communists must pass from the policy of a United Nation Front to the policy of a revolutionary bloc of workers and petty bourgeoisie. A party with such a dual composition is both necessary and expedient as long as it facilitates the actual leadership of the revolutionary movement by the Communist Party. So much has been reported, uh, but so little is understood of the events that are transpiring right now in the Middle East, particularly in Egypt. Countries considered to be our allies in the region are falling like dominoes as protests ensue from the Suez Canal in Egypt all the way to uh, Amman, the capital city of Jordan. Following the collapse of the rule of law in Tunisia, the first country to fall down. As many try to make sense of the situation, uh, the identity of those propelling the uh, protests still remains elusive to many. Well, I'm going to start off with a quote here from our, from our good old buddy from the Soviet Union, uh, Joseph Stalin. In an interview on July 4th, 1925, with the newspaper called Tokyo Nichi Nichi Shimbu, it's a Japanese newspaper, um, Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin was asked if he thought that the revolutionary turmoil that was occurring at the time in China, India, Persia, and Egypt, and other Eastern countries, if that was a sign that the Western powers had dug themselves a grave in the East, and whether they would be uh, buried there. Stalin answered to the reporter, yes, I do believe that. Uh, and he went on to say that, th that those countries I just mentioned right now in Asia and in the Middle East constitute a real threat to the, quote, um, that they will bring about, quote, a revolutionary crisis in the West. He added on that the West will be attacked on two sides, in the rear as well as in the front. And he said that the West will be forced to admit that it is doomed. Uh, and now what's going on seems to, it seems as if Stalin's prediction is occurring at the moment. Um, when watching the news and reading the newspapers, we hear a lot about the Muslim Brotherhood. Muslim Brotherhood are going to take over Egypt. Uh, they're going to slaughter all these people. But who are the Muslim Brotherhood? Well, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood organization was founded back in 1925 by an individual named Hassan al-Banna, who we see here on the left. Uh, he was an outspoken Egyptian school teacher and imam, and uh, among many topics, he openly discussed uh, Marxism, uh, positively, as a matter of fact. Um, he originally established the Muslim Brotherhood to be an Islamic society, and at first it attracted individuals such as Said Qutb, who we see here on the right. Said Qutb is considered to be an inspirational figure for a lot of the Islamic terrorism around the world, such as Al-Qaeda. They all revere Qutb as, their, um, as the John Locke of their philosophy, if you will. Uh, Qutub's writings have been credited uh, to inspire many uh, men like Bin Laden, like I said before. But what do his writings say? You know, what is it that inspires these individuals? Well, in his book that Qutub wrote called Social Justice in Islam, he discussed a range of topics, including communism at the time, uh, of which he said uh, the following. He said, Similar, uh, similarly, we Muslims have no good grounds for any hostility between Islam and the struggle for social justice, such as the hostility which persists between Christianity and communism. While communism is compelled to oppose religion in order to safeguard the rights of the workers, we have no need for any such hostility to religion. Uh, Kitub's writings, they resonated with many of his disciples, including one named Fatih uh, Yakan, who ended up becoming a leader for the Muslim Brotherhood. And in the 1960s, he wrote, the groundwork for the French Revolution was laid by Rousseau and Voltaire. The communist revolution realized plans set by Marx, Engels, and Lenin. The same holds true for us today. He considers all these figures to have been an inspirational, uh, inspirational characters for the formation of the Muslim Brotherhood as well. Because since they are, you know, these guys were revolutionary figures in their times. Um, and the Muslim Brotherhood, it's, they're not oblivious to uh, Said Qutb's communist or Leninist uh, beliefs. In fact, this member of the Muslim Brotherhood we see here, Ibrahim al-Haldabi, forgive me for butchering his name if I am, uh, 
In an article in 2008, he wrote, in, in Milestones, a book written by Kutub, uh, Kutub presents a manifesto for change, one heavily influenced by Lenin's What is to be done, which uh, the clear Islamization of the basic notions. The Muslim Brotherhood's unholy alliance with communism stretches as far back as the 1940s and 50s, at the same time that Stalin was in charge of the Soviet Union. And at that same time period, Stalin also said, in such countries as Egypt or China, the communists must pass from the policy of a United Nation Front to the policy of a revolutionary bloc of workers and petty bourgeoisie. A party of such a dual composition is both necessary and expedient as long as it facilitates the actual leadership of the revolutionary movement by the Communist Party. In an article in the Telegraph Herald, AP Foreign News analyst William J. Ryan uh, quoted Stalin, um, and that quote was in the paper, that's where I found it, uh, but he also uh, says in the article that the events in Egypt, uh, particularly the communists, right, they've infiltrated the Muslim Brotherhood, as he writes there. Uh, but what of the Communist Party in Egypt today? What are they currently doing right now? Are they involved in the protest? Well, sadly, oddly, he's a member of the Communist Party of Egypt, and he, um, he was speaking about this recent bombing that occurred in, in 2011, the Alexandria bombing. Alexandria is a city in Egypt, and there was a Coptic Christian church that was bombed a few hours into New Year's. Um, and he condemned the attack, but he said this. He said that the growing sectors of the Christians may join in the coming stage to protest movements demanding democracy, equality, and change the conditions prevailing dictatorship. This quote was said a week before the protests occurred. The protests in Egypt broke out on the 25th of January, 2011. Uh, also, a week before the protests, he said that we, the Communist Party of Egypt, are coordinating uh, some of the issues of democracy and an end to a state of emergency against the practices of torture and guarantee free elections. And when he says we are coordinating, he was referring to the Muslim Brotherhood in the previous paragraph of that article, that how they're still working together. So not just in the 40s and 50s, this is something that's still occurring even today, even though Stalin's dead. Um, but what did he mean by coming stage? You know. He obviously knew something was going to happen, which leads us to believe that the Communist Party of Egypt was definitely behind the events that are transpiring in the Middle East. And there's this communist website called 21st Century Manifesto. It's a WordPress website. And in that website, this communists admit that the Egyptian Communist Party is deeply involved in the current struggle against uh, the Mubarak dynasty, referring to the president of Egypt, Hosni Mubarak, who was deposed on February 14th of 2011, if I remember correctly. Uh, <clears throat> the Communist Party's long-standing ties with, um, with the Islamists is also uh, seen in their website where the Communist Party of Egypt talks about their relation with the Muslim Brotherhood. But this is a quote that I got from the Communist Party uh, website from Egypt. It was in Arabic. I had to translate it in English, but uh, using a computer program. <laughs> But the, the quote reads, uh, hundreds of patriotic and democratic forces and cadres of our party in Cairo, in the Cairo district of Adlin, and in other places in the capital, as well as other demonstrations in Port Said and Alexandria, um, against the inheritance of power to Gamel Mubarak, by the way, Gamel Mubarak is the son of Hosni Mubarak, Mubarak or an extension of, of Hosni Mubarak. He go, the party goes on to say, our party has participated in the demonstrations raising banners of the Communist Party to fly, right in the field of Abdin, and confirm the position of the Communist Party of the rejection of this system. And this here is a video that I got from CCTV, which is the official Chinese media station. Uh, and this is what's going on in Egypt and in Jordan, uh, which is a country, I think, believe north of Israel around there. And we see the communists are openly demonstrating in the streets, waving the red flags with the hammer and sickle and so forth. And you wonder, how come we haven't seen these clips in the U.S. media? How come, you know, Fox News and MSNBC and CNN aren't covering this? They're all focusing, oh, this is an Islamic uh, revolution. This is all Islamic. But there's more to it, as is obvious in these uh, video clips and the various quotes from communist leaders from Egypt. Um, the revolution that's occurring, in, that occurred in Egypt, rather, isn't just contained in Egypt. It's also occurring in these, old, in these other countries. There's protests in Iran. There's even some in Iraq still. Um, there's some in Sudan. Libya, as we know, is embroiled in a civil war. 
Uh, Tunisia was the first country to be involved in this. And in fact, if you look in Europe, I have Albania there highlighted in white. They also have uh, civil unrest between the main opposition socialist party uh, and the ruling party of Albania. Uh, in Tunisia, the Communist Party there, they put out a pamphlet where they had five points of what their goals would be in Tunisia. Uh, and these were their goals. One, sweeping out the dictatorship. Two, forming a transitional government. Three, defining the functions of the transitional government. Four, defining the council government constitution and determining its functions. And five, defining the nature of the Tunisian Democratic Republic. Um, this man over here, Hama Hamami, he is the leader of the Tunisian Communist Workers Party. And he's also um, working with the leaders of another party called the Islamic Renaissance Party, or, Na, or NADA, which is uh, a, a, a more religious party, not secularist, uh, socialistic. So we see here an Islamo-Communist uh, connection here. And both parties and a few other parties, they formed to create something called uh, the National Council for the protection of the revolution, which its stated goal is to assure that the reforms that they are passing don't get um, taken away by a subsequent government that might come to power in Tunisia. Also in uh, Yemen, the main opposition Yemeni Socialist Party, which once ruled over South Yemen when it was independent before 1990, um, has worked, is working now with other parties called the al Isla Party, which is the Muslim Brotherhood Party of Yemen and with the party called Hizb ut Tahir Party, which is a party that advocates for a world caliphate like what Glenn Beck's been talking about. But we're supposed to believe what Glenn Beck says isn't true. Well, this party advocates that, so maybe we should believe some of the stuff we hear from Glenn Beck. <laughs> but um, the, both of these parties, they form something called the Joint Meeting Parties. And the Joint Meeting Parties is actually led by this man that we see over here, Yassin Said Newman. And he was the former prime minister of South Yemen when it was still a communist country between 1986 and 1990. And he's also currently the secretary general of the Yemeni Socialist Party. And as I stated, the leader of the joint meeting parties. Um, during the Cold War, Yemen, like many other Soviet republics um, and Soviet annex countries and other Soviet allies like Cuba, exported terrorism around the world. <laughs>